Today on the channel we will be discussing the greatest and most effective military forces of the Dune universe. As I've stated before, most combat in Dune was hand-to-hand -hand based. The presence of Holtzman-based shield technology brought the necessity for limited use of Lasgon technology. Lasgon blasts produced nuclear reactions when they came into contact with shields, which would of course be devastating to fighters on both sides and likely cause even further damage to the worlds being fought on. Such weapons were still used, however, but only in specific circumstances. The ability to subjugate or keep peace in a galactic society required military forces. There are several different galactic military forces that came into power at different times during the Dune Universe's timeline. I will be listing the ones that I consider to be the most significant here. Sardukar was the name given to the House Carino's Imperial Fighting Forces. From a young age, Sardaukar were trained on the unforgiving world of Seleucus Secundus. Much like life on Arrakis, life on Seleucus Secundus was hard. The world pushed its inhabitants to their extremes. Seleucus Secundus became the training place of the Sardaukar once the royal house Carino moved from the world to the world Kaitane. The planet Seleucus Secundus had been depleted and ruined due to the decadence and misuse during the time in which House Carino resided there. It would eventually come to be known as a prison planet. The Sardaukar soldiers were feared throughout the Empire and widely thought to be the greatest warriors during the time of the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV. They would eventually, however, come to be defeated by the Fremen during the Battle of Arrakeen on Planet Dune. The Sardaukar were not the only ones to call Seleucus Secundus home, however. The Zensuni Wanderers also, for a time, had resided there. The Fremen people had descended from the Zensuni Wanderers, a tribe of people who moved from planet to planet, facing hardships and trials on different worlds. They eventually came to settle upon Arrakis. According to the Dune Encyclopedia, in the year 7193 AG, eons before House Atreides arrived upon the world. The hardness of the world shaped Fremen society, they lived lives of minimal wastefulness. Above all else, water was precious to them, for there was hardly any natural water on the planet since the coming of the great desert worms. Life in the harsh deserts of Arrakis also shaped more than exceptional combat warriors. By the time House Atreides came to Arrakis, the Fremen had already secretly been one of the greatest fighting forces in the universe considering their size and skills in combat. Once Paul Atreides joined the Fremen and introduced them to the Bene Gesserit Weirding Way, as well as Atreides battle training, they surpassed even the Imperial Sardaukar. As I said, the Fremen, led by Paul Atreides, eventually defeated the Imperial Sardaukar. Afterward, they led a crusade throughout the universe in the name of Paul Atreides. Sixty billion humans died during the Jihad that won the Atreides Empire. Ultimately still, the Fremen would wither until they were no more than a shadow of what they once were. The Museum Fremen of Leto II's distant empire merely acted out old Fremen ways, but did not truly live Fremen lives. In the time of the God Emperor, the fish speakers were Leto II's military force. They were the most effective military force of all time. Leto's fish speakers were all female, and they served him without question. The conditioning of the fish speakers was such that their loyalty for Leto greatly surpassed the loyalty that the Fremen held for their Muad'Dib. Fish speaker devotion to the god emperor was absolute. The fish speakers kept order throughout Leto's empire and did whatever he commanded, no matter how difficult. Even the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood were no match. At the death of the God Emperor, the fish speakers fell in line behind Duncan Idaho. Other than the God Emperor himself, Duncan had been the most consistent figure in Leto's empire, having been brought back countless times as a Gola. The fish speakers apparently squandered the leftover wealth of Leto's empire, eventually partnering with other groups by the time the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood emerged as the main power in the Old Empire, the fish speakers were of little significance. One final group that must be mentioned here are the Honored Matres. 
though they do not have a specific name for their fighting forces. The honored Matres were created during the scattering. The remnants of the Bene Gesserit who ventured out into the space beyond Leto's empire, and the remnants of the fish speakers who did the same, combined. Something about the scattering brought the necessity for the merging of these two groups. Without the spice melange, however, they lost many of the Bene Gesserit powers. The substance they used to replace spice also made them aggressive and extremely deadly. Once they returned out of the scattering into the old empire, they laid waste to entire planets. They were furious to be defied by any, and they demanded obedience from all. The Matres killed with their feet. Their shoes were equipped with razor-sharp pointed tips. Their combat skills outmatched those of even the Bene Gesserit. This fact is acknowledged several times in the book Chapter House Dune. The honored Matre's aggressive and rambunctious nature, however, often leads them down a self-destructive path. And these are the most prominent examples of fighting forces within the Dune universe. The timeline of the Dune series lasts thousands of years. Certain groups are more relevant at different times. The Dune series creates no illusion of a bloodless galactic empire. The human desire for power over others often leads to trouble. On a galactic scale, the quest for power leads to devastation on a mass level. At nearly every point in the history of the Dune universe, the people of the Imperium were controlled through violence at the hand of the dominating power of the time. Hi, it's me, Quinn, and thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you like and subscribe, and you can also follow me on Twitter if you want to help me spread my reach as a content creator. And also, if you would like to support this channel, you can click the PayPal link in the description to make a one-time donation, or you can make a monthly donation on Patreon. Thank you guys so much.